What a game, Craig. <laughs> well, I was quite lucky, actually, because I was covering digital, digital today. <laughs> right. Uh, so that, that involved watching uh, Aguero score a hat-trick uh, <laughs> and Man City demolish Aston Villa. And so I didn't really get to see this game. Oh, well, you missed a lot, Before, Craig, I, before I, I tuned in for, uh, for uh, what was the other game? For Roma Juve. For Roma Juve. Uh, so uh, if you do beg your pardon, I managed to skip most of this. I tell you what I know who didn't skip it, Frank LeBeouf. <laughs> what did you make of this? Surely from a defensive point, if you can appreciate a nil-nil over 120 minutes, no, you cannot appreciate those sort of games, you know, even if you were a defender. Um, you know, I understand that money talks uh, nowadays and, uh, and I can accept that uh, uh, a Super Cup final, Spanish Super Cup, can be played in Saudi Arabia. But it, there is something at the beginning of the game that I didn't feel is the atmosphere, the pressure of a final, the intensity or the, the expectation of the intensity. And it was missing. Mm. And, be, and I'm sure you would have had if it would have been played in Spain. And it's where I don't get it, it's where I don't connect. And after you have the quality of the game, where, well, it seemed to be, for me, a pre-season friendly game. It started to be a final and a big derby when Valverde made this horrible foul, sacrificed himself, that I felt, oh, OK, it's a final and it's yeah. really a game Real Madrid against Atletico and it's not a friendly game. But otherwise, no, of course, I didn't enjoy the game. No too many chances, too many, too many uh, fouls between the two teams. Nothing excited. exciting, sorry. Gab wants to talk. Should we go to Gab? Sure. <laughs> Gab, you can't say you enjoyed this. No, I was just thinking, I mean, Frank put it well about sort of the, the overseas preseason friendly uh, side of it. Uh, you get that feeling when you see Mariano Diaz come on because... Like, I'm not going to go and <laughs> defend Zinedine Zidane uh, at all costs, but, you know, you go into that game without Kareem Benzema, without Eden Hazard, without Gareth Bale. Atleti do what? Atleti do. This was an old-school Cholo performance. Um, and either you get the early goal and then it goes, it goes wild. You get, the, like, that, that crazy game that, that they had uh, last summer uh, in preseason. Uh, or otherwise, it's going to be grounded out uh, until the end. And, you know, I'm sorry, but... If you play most of the game with Jovic, who did, who did, who did all right, I thought, um, and then you turn to Mariano Diaz, it's just not going to be the same thing. Would you both have done what Valverde did, by the way? Probably. Yeah. Situation. Yeah, that's Probably. a, well, that's it's a no brainer. I'm, I'm telling you, it's no understatement when it is the play of the game. Yeah. And a couple of things about that. Up until that moment, every time there was a ball going out of bounds, you could see Cholo Simone saying, slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. <coughs> now, with three minutes to go, there's a red card. It's like, let's go, let's go, come on, play. Look, it's, it's Atletico Madrid. It is old school Atletico Madrid, I suppose. It is what Cholo likes to do, but man, it does not do anything for the spectacle. And I guess there is no responsibility in Atletico Madrid to make this a show for anybody. But, well, I'll tell you, they were successful in not making it a show. The other thing I would say... MVP of the game, if you were to pick a good player out of this game, is Thomas Partey. So th that tells you th yeah. that there was no quality in the final third. Everything was playing in the middle. It was unwatchable, but Real Madrid won it. Real Madrid happy. Robin yeah. Solins the once so. again of Barcelona. Um, of course, a lot of rumours surrounding Valverde and his future over the last 24 hours. And Xavi coming in to replace him. Gab, am I right in saying that that's not going to happen now? Well, at least until the summer. Uh, well, it's not going to be Xavi. Xavi seems to have uh, called himself out. Uh, there were rumors swirling around that they'd approach Ronald Koeman, which I'm skeptical about. But if they did, uh, they might want to look at their calendars. This guy's playing Euro 2020 in the summer. Um, but certainly the other rumor is how does Valverde feel about all this, all, all this sneaking around uh, behind his back? Uh, might he just say, guys, you guys think I'm the problem? Let me just go and, and walk out rather than you know, enjoy these last few months and without Luis Suarez as well. So uh, they kind of, I think, pretty needlessly made a rod for their own back with this very ham-fisted way they, they, they went about things. How does, it, does this affect the team at all? Like, you talk about it amongst yourselves kind of thing with what's going on and the rumours and, and them going to court Xavi? Well, probably, yeah, I would imagine. Uh, as Gab said, this is all very public. Yeah. So, from Valverde's perspective, not that it will come as a great surprise to him, but uh, he knows the end is nigh for him. Don't know when it's going to be, but it's not going to be long. 
So he may take it into his own hands. The other side is with the Suarez injury, it's a big chance for Antoine Griezmann to step up sure. and play that central role uh, because he's been craving that. Now he wasn't going to get it barring, uh, barring an injury to Suarez, so he's now going to get it. Uh, but the whole thing, the way they've gone about the business, the way they went about their uh, potential pursuit of Neymar in the summer, again, it was a real mess. Now this, off hot-footing it to the Middle East for some... Oh, we're only going over there to like see a few things and have a bit of a holiday and take in the good weather. Oh, and meet Xavi as well. So, uh, the whole thing's just a bit of a mess. And if they don't get the results, then, then it'll change quickly. If you're Valverde, you're thinking, well, I'm not going to walk. You're going to pay me off. Well, of course. No, if you're, no, at this point, you're hanging in. Yeah. And you're saying, all right, I'm here. I'm doing a job. Oh, by the way, we're still... Yeah, we're top of the table, right? We're, yeah. we're, we're up here. Is it, isn't this where you want me? Okay, here's the other thing. If you're shabby, part of the reason you don't take this job is because you just heard that Luis Suarez is going to be out for four months. So yeah. why would you <coughs> jump into the middle of this when there are reasons as to why this team is struggling? And if you have followed this team this year, you know that the, the vulnerabilities are there. And part of that is the fact that if Lionel Messi is not scoring goals or Suarez is not scoring goals, they're not coming anywhere. Now you take Suarez out of that equation, makes it all the more challenging for Barcelona. This is a difficult, difficult situation for Valverde, for Barcelona, and for anybody who comes into this position. As Craig mentioned, Frank, this is it now. Antoine Griezmann time, time to step up. You're playing in the position that you want to play in. Luis Suarez out for four months. It's really now his time to shine. It is, it is, even if it's sad uh, uh, that, uh, even if I'm not a big fan of Suarez, that uh, the guy is going to be out for four months is really true, as you said, and Craig said, that for Griezmann is the time to show his potential, that uh, he can be the future of Barcelona uh, at front and, uh, and be helpful to, to Messi to again score goals. So uh, hopefully he's going to show it because the future is with Griezmann. I don't think the future is with Suarez. Uh, and, uh, and it's the time to everybody to step up, of course Griezmann at first, but also Messi to show how he can, be, um, he can be playing with, with Griezmann in front and be successful with him. Why are you not a fan of Suarez, Frank? Because he bites people or because, <laughs> because you don't think he's a very good footballer? I mean, what, what, what no, is it? No, it's, 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 true, it's true, Craig. It's, it's mostly because of that. I think it's, it's not the kind of player that I, 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 will, I will want to, to play against, you know, because I, I think I'm not going to finish a game. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he's not very fair play. He's not the type of player that I like watching. And that's it. It's just, it's just like that. I think uh, uh, what he did in Liverpool and after in Barcelona was exceptional. What he did against Uruguay where, you know, he got sent off and teased the players, uh, the, the other team after. What he did uh, biting other players is not the type of player that I like. And I, I'm allowed to say it because you asked me the question. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.